Hello and welcome to Crusading Through Part 3. I am Jim. I'm Sam. And today, thank you for joining us, we're going to be talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Part 3, Stardust Crusaders, the manga. We're going to be talking about specifically the Hail to You <laughs> Judgment Arc. Part 1 to 5. You all wished for it and it came true and now we're going to bite your heads off. <laughs> So, we are going to be talking about chapters of Stardust Crusaders 61 through 65. Also pretty fitting that this has a lot of biting for what, what the stand does, and we just had to do part 8 chapter, which had a lot of biting from an enemy or enemy animal, I guess. And also early part 8, which had a lot of bite marks that yes. were never explained. <laughs> At least, it, hey, this could explain it right here, the alternate, alternate universe judgment. Actually, now you say that, <laughs> everything's starting to slot he right was, into place. He is buried underground. Mm-hmm. 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 All connected. Mm-hmm. Big brain Iraqi, maybe. Part eight is the new part three. Oh my god, okay, this is such a tangent, but you know that big, the, the meme of like the expanding brain, it would be like the electricity brain? <laughs> so I saw a picture of a fish last night that literally is that meme. It's a, one of those deep sea fish that has like glowing, like a bioluminescence, yeah. and it's its whole head is clear, and its brain is literally glowing and i'm like how did no one ever make a meme out of this jim you can do it you can make this a thumbnail well, uh it'd be such a weird well, speaking of fish we'll we take it takes place in the red sea that was a really good transition yeah. i was i was hoping you do that <laughs> uh so yeah this is a having escaped from whatever the last fight was that i already forget because i can't keep these straight in my brain wait let me give me a second i'll try and figure it out mm-hmm. it was not steely dan no it was not lovers no. It was not Enya. No. It was something. It was the baby. Yes. Baby stand. It yes. was baby stand. Baby stand and the son we did last episode. We did together. Yes. Okay. We, we doubled up. So after escaping from baby stand. Uh, <laughs> Manish boy. Yeah. Which still hilarious. They don't know they fought. No. Only Kakyoin knows that he fought. And he fought. keeps it from everybody. Not the only thing he keeps away from somebody in the party. <laughs> yeah. True. So they're heading on a speedboat towards... Uh, an island, a mysterious island. Well, they were going to cross the Red Sea, and they took a detour. To meet someone. Jo- yes. Joseph is like, I need to meet someone. I don't know. I, I guess he knew this location right away, I guess, when he talked to the Speedwagon Foundation. But, uh... Sure. So, that's the funny also, thing. Also, they, they did... As we learned, is that Abdul... They, they transported Abdul to this place way ahead of where the party is. <laughs> Which I find hilarious. Yeah, as so what we end up learning is that Avdol's here, and he's dressed up like an old man Avdol. Yeah, he to be, they pretend to be his father. He's feeding, Which is strange. Yes, he's like spying on them, he, and then he goes to feed the chickens, which, did you read their names? Yes, I did. I want to, hold on. Three, three I of them. I didn't write them down. I did. So, Lionel. Yes. For Lionel Richie. Yes. Michael for Michael Jackson, yeah, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Uh, and then, oh shit, there was this another one. the easiest one. Oh, Where's, Prince. It's yes, Prince, yes. the easiest one. I, just, I love when Iraqis just, like, mask off. Like, I'm just going to put my silly reference like if, right if I here. Had, if I had pet chickens, this is what I would name them. It'd probably be a chapter, like, like a chapter uh, author note. If I had chickens, <laughs> I would name them after my favorite musicians. I do like how I had, threw Lionel Richie, though, in there. You know, Michael Jackson and Prince, I expect, but Lionel Richie is a nice surprise. Yeah, that was, honestly, it took me a second. I was like, oh, wait, there's, a, there's another one. What is that? I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, so... As you said, I wrote down Joseph act like he doesn't like, like he doesn't know like what's going on or like who that is or, or he, he 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 like really pretends it's not Abdul like very heavily. Like, I hate this. I know because both me and Jim both we talk about it how we both read a little bit at the beginning of the next arc <laughs> just to see like how they act to like the reveal. Because yeah, they don't technically because the way the part three is written it's like literally it always ends with like the last second of the fight like every chapter ends the epilogues in the beginning of the next arc yeah everything is so like stitched together like so we both you know i think it's the first five pages <laughs> it, that, the first yeah, the first five pages priestess, but i literally I just read like what like what their what their response was and they're just horrible friends so yeah i mean i just want to talk about that right now so <laughs> the whole thing they're keeping everyone knows this and they are just keeping this a secret from paul Nareth. who is going who went through a lot of shit a lot of guilt and if he learns this he would be like okay cool but like you know do the thing like i did it for your own protection kind of shit bullshit you see you see in like movies or like tv shows a horrible trope of just like not telling someone an important detail that would probably go over okay if you explain it to him yeah it's like he would avoid like one of these wishes i'm sure or maybe maybe not even like his 
probably not even both of them, maybe, if he didn't feel like complete guilt going in here. But she, especially telling it is Abdel's father, like, he made him just feel bad about the dead. Like, yeah, also, because, like, like, part of this whole arc is, like, uh, Paul Nareff is like, oh, no, I need to tell Abdul's father that his son is dead. Because Heath believes that Abdul's father lives on this island, this remote island, totally disconnected. He doesn't want to be involved with the world in any he, way. They, 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 like, oh, yeah, he had a stand. We don't know what it is. But it makes you, like, super intrigued to, like, what is possibly be. Then you get disappointed that it is just Abdul again. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of dislike that it is just Abdul. I wish it was Abdul's dad. I mean, I want Abdul to that, come back. It would but... be so cool to have Abdul's dad just join them and have a really cool stand. <laughs> it would have been really interesting. Have, especially like, an old man character along with Joseph or something would have been kind of cool. Yeah, because and it's funny. Abdul is the character that kind of is, like, closest with Joseph. Joseph, at least early on yeah so having like them team up would be a fun as you said it'd be fun little two old guys teaming up the beat up bastet <laughs> as, they, as they everybody thinks they're having like <laughs> gay old man sex. <laughs> gay old man sex in the streets um but so yeah this is baffling and as you said like there's even a moment it, it feels like they're just being mean to yeah Paul like, they're being mean and it, it, with the like one of the worst tropes of just like yeah like i said in like any kind of media it Honestly, like, even just uh, more general, like, the whole trope of, like, the misunderstanding is so frustrating. I know this is written literally, like, because 25 years ago, and, but and the get, misunderstanding trope in, like, fiction is so annoying. And we're getting, like, in two arcs from now, when we have Endol, when Kathleen gets KO'd, essentially, for the entire part, rest of part three, <laughs> like, he's just gonna be like, oh, no, Kathleen died. We'll never tell him, but he'll arrive, show back up, and like, oh, this is Kathleen's dad that we found <laughs> with Sunglasses. <laughs> Like, imagine they just did that again to everybody, or Paul got his revenge by doing that to the rest of the group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I want to say another thing that, like, pisses me off about this whole thing. So, the pr like, presumably the idea um, for not telling Paul Nareff about Paul of Abdul's death was they didn't want him to blab so that stand users would target Abdul while he's recovering. But <laughs> by the time they get to the island, there is already an enemy stand user there. And, so the plan was like completely irrelevant. And, and plus, you can say, okay, he's in the speedback of but the main people they want to target are like Jotaro and Joseph. Those are two, especially Joseph, because he's like the only one that can really track them. Yeah. And, and Jotaro's probably the like, next most powerful person. They're like, okay, these are two we have to kill like, now. It's almost like it's it's assuming that like, Paul, it, like he's more important to the arc than he should be. And I'm assuming like they probably afterwards know what happens is Kakuin going off to go recover from his like eye injuries that like the why are they always go after him? But no, he's completely fine the entire time with the Speedbound Foundation. It's just, I it's, mean, it's let's not, let's call it what it is. It's literally just a Rocky, like, writing by the seat of his pants. I'm, I'm sure in Dio's, like, lecture about the whole stuff going on that he had the section on the Speedwagon Foundation, <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, I, th I will say, like, this is total presumption or it's total uh, what's the word uh prediction the theory crafting but i feel like araki literally did not intend to, to do this like this was a decision of like okay well whole horse couldn't join the team because he was like kind of an asshole even though i did do a volume cover with him on it yeah um he was too much of an asshole we're gonna have um abdul come back for some reason it would have been so interesting dynamic just to have like like the guy who's like, pissed off at the guy who killed his friend and like him have it like reluctantly team up and like I don't know. That'd be really cool. As I, I, we mentioned this in the Enya fight, but like there is literally a part where like Whole Horse and Paul Nerf have the option to team up against Enya, but Paul Nerf <laughs> says, "Fuck you, Die. you killed my friend." <laughs> so like literally, had they just told him this, there is the chance that like yeah. Whole Horse would have been like with them, maybe <laughs> probably. Like no one was to team up with Whole Horse until it's we get true. the Boingo. It's kind of a curse. Until we get the like, the, like Boingo way later down the line, and even then, it's like a curse. Like the, the whole thing yep. <laughs> where even though they they like think they they're a shoe in, this everything what, just this, backfires. This is why I'm so excited for the the Josuke Whole Horse team up. <laughs> like, which is exciting. That's a, yeah. When Whole Horse ends up shooting himself, Joe's gonna keep having to heal him up. <laughs> or like, I also feel like it's like him getting a tour of Morio and just seeing the weird shit of like, oh, this is my friend. He's not an alien at all. Or like, this is a rock with a face on it. That's Angelo though. He was a serial killer until I turned him into a rock or mixed him with a rock. We'll we'll see what happens. I I can't wait for that. So we'll, yeah. We'll so and also answer. they probably broke the broke the golden rule of, of what they by now should learn of stop going off by yourself anywhere. 
even if you think like, oh, we went to the secluded <laughs> island, you you have to assume someone's going to follow you. They this had is a, a hard learned lesson. They, they literally had a guy follow them in a buggy, a mirrored buggy, <laughs> in like the middle of the desert. <laughs> Sam, it's a hard learned lesson. Maybe after this, Paul Nerf will finally internalize this, but. I, he he won't because I'm I'm sure that he does not. I'm sure that he walks off alone later in some other arc. Hmm, I could face off this this mysterious mob boss alone. That'd be that'd be fine. <laughs> he literally, he doesn't even learn his lesson. <laughs> that'd be fine. Oh, and, and then yes, yeah, so he finds a genie lamp covered in barnacles. Does the classic rubs it and gets three wishes. But he says, oh, it's like Aladdin. And I'm like, you should learn your lesson in like, any kind of media with any because every genie thing is monkey paul scenario yeah a genie is not like because it's benevolent cause, yeah well, yeah at least in the cartoon aladdin it is but like not normally yeah and because like, like it's, it's obvious yeah, because you know obviously before the animated one because you know the three golden rules of no love no murder no bring people back from the dead yeah that's what i was gonna say because like he he wishes for literally two of those like or almost wishes. he almost wishes uh for the love one but <laughs> like, then he what, wishes what, for the like Oh man, kill Dio! <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> or tell me Dio, because like, what? <laughs> what did you think about that? Like, or what if you said, "Tell me Dio stand"? Like, ah, shit! That like, would have been really cause, funny. Because like, he has to, you know, learn. He has to like use his, the wishes to make his stand work, because he goes off memories. But like, he doesn't do any of the vocal, like any kind. Of tell me the truth, kind of thing. Yeah. So that would like, I guess, Abdul kind of does that, but like, it's more of like a like a. Like a catchphrase or like a one-liner, essentially. Yeah, Avidal's just being, a, like, a, a, he's being cheeky at the end. I kind of like it here, though, because, like, Polnareff is already in, like, a really highly, like, he's stressful a, state. He's depressed. So it makes sense that he immediately would think to, like, his biggest source of trauma, which is his <laughs> well, dead the, sister, and uh, then the next one would be Avidal. Also the first, yeah, so the genie appears, he called himself Cameo, which is the username of, that's who we went to learn. Sure. But, and he, he he goes hand to hand combat with Polar very well. Where like it'd be like, why even do the wishes? Even you can like match him with power like very easily. And uh, it's almost like he wants to like just play with him. Like yeah. he's kind of like uh, he's kind of being a bastard. So he's named after a, at an American R and B group, which I never Cameo. heard of. It sounds familiar. I couldn't tell you a song. That I couldn't tell about. you either. So yeah, you hope you know Polnareff does the joking thing like, "Oh, I wish for money." And that's me. And he finds like treasure. Like, "Oh, this is the Napoleonic era gold." Like, yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I I actually read that a few times because I wasn't sure if that was him saying it or if it was um, uh, Cameo saying it. But I'm pretty sure it is him. I mean, he's French, Sam. He's also he's, he's, he, French. he's a he's a. Also, I guess he learned that in school of what Napoleonic era coins look like. Being being French gives you the uh, <laughs> the ability to detect French things. <laughs> That's how it works. I think maybe we could say like he's he, these coins are like pristine. Maybe he's also made out of dirt. As okay, we, well, okay, also actually, made of dirt by the way. They are so the sand goes by your memories. Yes. So <laughs> maybe maybe Paul Nerf is very familiar with Napoleonic coins so that's why it went he, uh, he drew this from his memory he's one and of the, that's why he recognized the it. classic coin collector kind of people you know yeah. they're it, they get overly obsessed with them so i guess it makes sense anybody who's in that field not but, to uh, spend even more time on this but also he could have looked at the year and maybe paul Nareff being french probably would recognize okay well if this is from like <laughs> 1777 uh, it might be from the napoleonic era i think is that from napoleon i don't know french history I, I, let's say 1790 my, my napoleonic war knowledge comes from mountain blade napoleonic wars let's say 1790 to be uh, more safe okay sure uh, so we get, he grants the wish by saying hail to you, which means luck be with you. Also, oh, sorry, I want to say love, uh, judgment's design. Judgment it's, looks so cool to me. It's interesting. I think it's a total success. Like, this is one of the most, like, memorable stands for me. I kind of wish it went more into the genie look, though. That's the funny thing. It's like, it really it, it, doesn't at all. Because, like, like, phone goes, goes off, like, right away, saying, oh, you're, uh, you're a fucking stand, obviously. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he does. And it's really funny, too, because, like, it, like looks... a lot of the stands are, like, the Star Platinums, your, like, uh, what's the Magician's Red? They they look like creatures. They, they don't look like They're human robots. They look yeah. very human. Where what... this one is, like, one of the most just straight-up robots yeah, that you've seen. Yeah, it looks, especially when it gets broken down, like, it's, mm. it, you see, like, mechanical, like, limbs. Yeah, it's got, like, but these wires and shit hanging off. I, I, I like it. I kind of wish he went and had a more of a genie look, but, like, I, I don't know. It, it was It's a weird choice that he was going for a genie stamp and not make it, like, actually look like a genie. Mm. Or even, like, maybe it doesn't even have, like, the, the genie pants or, like, little, like, poofy, like, Arabian pants. <laughs> Cause like, cause obviously, yeah, he's obviously going for like, you know Aladdin's yeah, obviously for inspiration. For sure, yeah. But uh, 
Yeah. Or the, 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 Wishmaster. Phone off also. <laughs> well, I was like, was Wishmaster? Master I, se- I don't know. I was like, I'm just a Wishmaster <laughs> series so after that. And that's completely like, different. So, uh, <laughs> Phone off does a crazy leg pose again. Which has become like one of his like victory poses. Oh my god! And, like, yes, this start. is a crazy. I didn't because like he, he's this. that like again like for one like one of the ch- like in chapter part three I think he's that like like a, just a straight up normal pose version of that and that's like one of his victory poses like all star battle on eyes of uh-huh. heaven. I love. Yeah, he does a great like he does he basically did does the pose again. It's a great it's a great pose. Paul Nerf loves doing his big split poses. He really does. He got every day's leg day. There's also one of these um, covers has a, a pose where he's kind of like like. He's, yeah, he's got like his it's legs. Sim- it's similar to that, but yeah, he has his like he's not it's from do- a different angle. Yeah, it's, it that's, looks really good. That's the one used for a lot of his victory poses. It looks and, great. It's I think it's a volume. No, it's not a volume cover. I think it's just a yeah. It's cover. like a part three or part four. It has it uses that, but uh, he tries to think of his second wish because he gets crazy after seeing the treasure. He does maybe think of a manga artist. You don't want that, buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, it's or this is, is this the second reference to Polnareffland? Did he say? Did he say Polnareffland in this? I did, uh, that. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought Pawn Earthland happens like early. It may because he doesn't just... say it in this one. He or... does. Yeah, he says. Um, Did he say he wants to be a manga artist, and he talks about how he wants to be bigger than Disney. Um, and <laughs> I want to build Pawn Earthland. And then we see like kind of like it's funny because he says. I think maybe the enemy just had like the background, like or have like a, like a you know like an outline of of what Pawn Earthland is, where this one doesn't. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he was also inspired subconsciously by seeing the theme park in the last arc. Yeah, I mean, he also wish you know maybe I can get a I can get a girlfriend. It, it's hilarious like, that he would. He is. I think it's the Steve the Steve Brul of like if I could wish for a cute girl or a jetpack. Like I wish for a jetpack so I can get the cute girl. <laughs> <laughs> also, I do love like this is just one of those things that's so funny to me. Like, so Paul Nerf is French. He's a French man. Yes, they meet him in like. Hong Kong was that where they meet him? I believe so. Yeah. So he's he talks about wanting to have a, a a beautiful girlfriend, and they're bound with the red string of fate, which is such a Japanese like concept of love. It's, yeah. It's really funny that Paul Nerf well, wants the red string of fate. Yeah. It's... I'm pretty sure that's like a Japanese thing. Right? I think so. Yeah. I remember it was from my uh, favorite Your Name movie. <laughs> Maybe he's a big he's a big fan of, of he's a uh, fucking Jap- weave. Yeah, the big weave. He's also has a mind- he wants to be a manga artist. He's the too. mind of a child. So well, actually, sorry to keep dwelling on this, but so he says I want to be a manga artist, but manga just means comic, and the comics that we see look very much like French comics. I like that I little wa- detail. I want to be the artist of Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, and as he, he goes from manga artist to, to a girlfriend, one to, is just Charlie Brown. To, to can you revive people from the dead and just, and just like basically wishes for both his sister and Paul and Art, Art, uh, Abdul, I mean, to be alive again, and his, and his sister seem, Sherry seems to be back to life. Sherry, uh, so, this. This whole thing is, it's good. Like, it's not, like, my favorite the, thing. The build-up is pretty cool to it, because... The build-up is great. Because she keeps running away for, from him. He you know, leaves dead like, dead birds on the ground and, like, saying, you, you, I'm not ready yet, essentially. And, like, and she, yeah, she has a gross, like, half face and, like, attacks him. And, like, she just, like, takes so many bites off of his fucking neck. <laughs> so one of the things that, like, really grossed me out was she rips his neck off and then shoves her fingers into, like the hole that she ripped oh, out like I, I, it's but, insane i wrote down the abdol one because that's like the grossest one but yeah Cam- cameo admits that he's actually judgment of course uh yeah and abdol comes back and attacks him and he does this like claw attack on ponar's chest and like his fingers snap off like in the claw attack so just like fingers is in him yeah it's really gross i'm like man ponar got fucked I'm gonna up show here sam this- oh damn no no i'm gonna show sam the part where she shoves her fucking fingers into his throat yeah, it's like for being because they're dirt, so like just, just break apart very easily, but can take just bites out. Also, it's been a it's been a little bit since we've seen like a woman. He this is very this is very reminiscent of like what like a part like Lisa Lisa looked like in like yeah like, she, like part one and part two women of just being very pretty when they show them. I think there was a woman in the very beginning of the the baby stand fight, but she was veiled. I don't think we but saw even like, the her face. even the um the uh what's it called uh the nurse from when Jotaro had to fight Kakuin in the school. Like, with she did v- also look. Araki definitely had a, a way that he drew women, and yeah. he drew so few of them, yeah. he didn't have to worry about it, it at he, least until part four. They weren't very prominent. Like, only Lisa Lisa was the only prominent one. He, like, loved her so much, he wanted her to be a character, but unfortunately, they couldn't let her win a fight, or <laughs> win, like, a real, like the, one of the bigger fights. Because it's not really, I mean, we get past Tet, but that, that's really it, right? There aren't yeah, any Bastet, other... Well, High Priest is technically, because she... Um, we don't see a design for her, though. That's, we, that's, what I mean is, like, a, women that we see, like, just drawn by Rocky. Because hmm. we don't really see her. She just gets like... 
Well, yeah, she only got a design in the game, and that became yeah. her design afterwards. I do love her at design so much. Meddler's design. It looks really good. It's very good. Midler. Midler, Meddler. Like Bette Midler. Bette Midler, yeah. Um, um, yeah, Bastet, I guess, because I guess she's the only other woman. And then she's... there's the guy that's a, a, the front's a woman I don't count. the back. So... I... <laughs> oh, man. I guess. I count that as both. I want to see what that design looks like because I feel like that. I feel like that face kind of looks like this, like still. There has to be. Bastet one. looks so different though. Bastet has like a very different face design. Because from what I remember. Cause even when we had the uh, the the Empress, like she was, it was a f- ugly woman inside a pretty woman. Oh yeah. Cause... I will never re- remember the Empress arc. It, it always just like I always <laughs> forget the like that whole thing happened and joseph had like a side story i don't blame you all of part three i mean i'm enjoying reading part three and especially in the moment i, I love it but then you you were like oh yeah remember the fucking like oh, i'm trying to think because of that one i can't i can't Just, remember like, a fight and i'm always like what i can't remember big plot line or a small like small plot line, but i can remember like the most like broadest or like the weird shit that like no one remembers <laughs> i can't uh, yeah sorry let's maybe go back to the thing so yeah, I think this whole, I mean, it's really quick from here. Like, it's just um, him being attacked by the two. He, he, he tries to bring out Silver Cherry, but Cammy just grabs him. So it's just a three-on-one beatdown, essentially. Yeah, it's really, like... And then, it's, like, the sec- a second Abdul appears. It's, like, really, like, jarred. Because it looks like the second Abdul is, is, like, missing the eye as well. Or, like... Yeah, that's a really weird little... Because, like, I, I was like, that's just me. Am I seeing things? Or is his eye also messed up? Or he just put on prosthet- prosthetic just to fuck with this guy? <laughs> so there's a... The, the whole thing is kind of the misdirect here is um, Paul Nareff thinks that he's his because he's about to get killed. He's like, oh, I'm seeing he's bleeding, double. He's bleeding out. because He's like close to death, he yeah. says. He's like, oh, I'm seeing double. I'm seeing like two Abduls. And then the one Abdul summons a uh, uh, Magician's Red. And like literally just destroys the ab. So the way it's he awesome. just, yeah, he, the, that is really cool. Like, he just like crushes his arm and it's like shatters. And, and so they say clay. I think they refer to them as being made of clay, which... To me, I guess it's like a biblical reference. I guess, yeah, that too. And it's just like, I, I it makes it, it'd be mud. It's just, it's surrounded by water and like and like dirt. So I guess like, yeah, we can be clay. They're also like near like Jerusalem. Like, yeah. They're near like the quote unquote holy land. But that's not necessarily where the people were made, right? I don't know. Where's Where's the Garden of Eden, Sam? <laughs> Tell me where the Garden of Eden is. I, I, uh, I, I had you know when I went to private school gym. I did not pay attention to any sermons because it <laughs> bored me to tears. Uh, no, I, I don't blame you. They're very boring. I, I, I had to deal with that every Thursday, and it was the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't remember much of the Bible now. So. so, I think the Garden of Eden is actually in Michigan. I might be wrong. I was gonna, I was going to say uh, probably in Brazil. Okay. In the, I don't... Mi- in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, why no one could find it anymore. And there's one of every animal. <laughs> one of every animal, one, but they all became bugs. <laughs> they all this became deep lore. They, they all... This is some biblical deep lore. <laughs> the devil got in there and turned all those animals that were on the ark into insects in the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> oh, so wait, now the ark animals are the same animals yep. in the Garden of Eden? Yep. Okay, now this is apocryphal. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we see Magician's Red so, well, here. He well, does a funny pose. Well, we get the classic, he does the tisk tisk and yes I am. Oh my god, yes, we do get Because he, the... goes, he goes to an entirely new personality change that Polar Up actually, like... Acknowledges. Acknowledges. Like, what the fuck is yes, going so on? Yes, so we have the amazing, as, so, as he said, he says, Muhammad Abdul, And he's like, yes, I am. Also, he's just like, so he says the bullet only grazed him because the backstab made him look up, which is, like, hilarious. So I wanted to go. I forgot to look back and see like what the shot looked like. It certainly did not look how he's describing. So not only does he explain, oh yes, when I got backstabbed by Jay Guile, it made me bend back and the bolt didn't hit my brain. He literally says it only hit my skin and skull, like that's as if like, that's okay. You still have a fast moving object hitting your hitting, hitting your, your skull, skull, which is gonna cause like your, your brain is gonna fucking vibrate. It's, it's like, oh yeah, football players just like, you know get hit in the head too, and they're just fine. <laughs> as long as the football players aren't touching each other's brains, they're probably okay. <laughs> CTE is nothing. What did you learn? He might have brain damage. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, it, it, it's honestly you could read it as Abdul because Abdul is like unhinged here. So he basically he basically just uses his hail to you and does his own hell to you. Hell to you, incredible. So there's he a had ton a, of English in this. So while he was recovering here, he was writing down all these one liners like Jotaro <laughs> did with with Rubber Soul. <laughs> um. So what I what I like here that is just like so weird and the translators never yeah, ever still uh, never still Steely Dan sorry okay I was gonna say I was like what um whatever 
but so one thing that the translators do, they have, they struggle translating this because <laughs> Abdul just starts saying weird English yeah, lines that don't really apply to things. He says, like, oh, he says it in English. Like, he also says it in English. Like, So the, basically the exchange I'm referring to is Abdul is like talking about how he's going to beat Judgment and he's like, oh, you're going to have to give Dio bad news. But the way that like... Because in Japanese, in the original text, Abdul says bad news and then something in Japanese. And then um, Cameo says good news and then something. So the, the writers have to like play with the sentence to like make it make sense. And it's just really funny to me. So yeah, Abdul. The, the translators, not the writers. So, so Abdul just starts fighting Judgment. Judgment just chucks Sherry at Abdul, which is hilarious. And Phil like, don't chuck my like imitated, imitation sister. There's one hilarious panel. There's like a meme about like, women in comic books and like bad like whatever when they're drawn poorly where their spines are just like in a way so that their boobs and their butts like face the same way they, literally like it's insane there's one shot of sherry oh well, she's clay so it her, her boob and her butt but it's hysterical to see <laughs> jojo's spines are like the most notoriously flexible. her boobs and her butt are almost touching and they're also pointing the same way <laughs> it's fine uh so, i do like that Abdul, or no that paul nerf does have that where he's like how dare you it's like how dare you break my sister? Like she was trying to kill you. Oh, she's like, like, the it's like it's like still her. Im like, I know she tried to kill me, but her image is still her image. Paul so. is just insane. Yeah. So Abdul continues with his one liners that he was just like ready to go with. Was he with four wishes? He breaks. He breaks. Uh, a judgment's arm. You see like really mechanical arms to it. I really like that. Yeah. I like seeing. And then later on, when he does the beat down, you see like his. Actually, no, it's that part. His um. He breaks off like parts of the head panel too. Uh, yeah. It's just, it's really cool. I, I like seeing this. So, and he also mentioned Abdul got, like, stronger since, like, the start of the journey. And, like, so he's, he's not fully healed. He was only able to stand three days ago, which is, this is, like, insane for what he's pulling off for not being able to stand three days ago. That's, like, something you need rehab for, for, like, <laughs> being, like, probably almost paralyzed or going through, like, semi-paralysis. He certainly got a concussion from that bullet. There's no way he didn't get a <laughs> yeah, concussion <he> had, <laughs> from the bullet and not even, like, the, the stab wound, like... <laughs> Which is assumingly like we cut his final. It's cord either in between half. a concussion and like the and like the probably the mental trauma for maybe having the thought of maybe I won't be able to walk again. <laughs> like this is like and, and he probably also like he also said he lost co and he learned like uh, we read a little bit afterward that he like lost consciousness though so like who knows like what, what could happen because I don't know between, between like the mental trauma and like the literal trauma like who yeah. knows. Uh, but so then, yeah, he basically starts beating him, and he, he, destro he just destroys Judgment. Like he's like, it's hilarious, actually. He beats the shit out of it. My favorite part is when he makes like a uh, I don't know what it's called, but like the little like cord that like assassins use, they like a piano wire, yeah, they get, like a piano wire. He does that with fire, and he starts like strangling Judgment, <laughs> which is crazy. I love this it. is why he, this is Rocky won the right off Advil because he's just fucking broken with a fire like. like uh, a fire piano wire it's ridiculous so and then yeah they, they find his tube his breathing they uh cameo so cameo and, runs away like cameo like judgment, judgment escapes away. yeah and they find like a like a random bamboo like shoot like in the ground and he's Which put is a really leaf. funny to see in the fucking red sea Be yeah because it, oh he has to be nearby because of how powerful judgment was to able to combat silver chariot <laughs> once again wonder of you <laughs> yeah and uh once again um uh baby face yes you have to be close to baby face so just fucking no baby face is like the strongest stand ever i can actually stand that because you have to be around the, the people that are actually sleeping but then get it uh, but baby face baby oh i think it's not saying baby stand no no sorry i mean baby fish in part four. Oh, okay part five rather that stand is like long range and also just indestructible yeah it's stupid. Well, it's, it's, like we said, the rules of like the, they also mentioned the long range stands in in uh, with like lovers and everything and like how much they don't actually work. Even like Highway Star. Oh, <laughs> Highway Star is a great example. <laughs> you just be fucking anywhere. Literally, like, uh, and it's just like getting nutrients. Like I said, going through part three and seeing stand signs and like where <laughs> it goes from there, it's fascinating. It kind of works in a way of like it's so new to these characters they just Even, don't understand. Like how, the sun having to be so close and just how deadly it could be, but like being so close is like deadly though to the user. Like mm -hmm. this as well. Like I, he's kind of like the same logic of you know how everyone always clowns on the um there's there there can't be a dream or like a mirror world you can't live in a mirror world like there's that line and then people said like oh well in part five uh 
what was what's that stand it's a michael jackson reference oh man, man in the, the mirror, mirror. They're like, man, man in the mirror is like a mirror world. It's like, well, they didn't know about that. <laughs> like, it, Yeah, they don't know about that. They, like, literally the only person that could tell them there was, it's a mirror world is Polnareff. And he did not contact them until like the end of part five. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, I, I think that's like, these characters know so little about stands that but, it's like fine when they're but wrong. Indeed, but there are men that have experienced, prob- most likely experienced other stand users in their job, especially with half of them like experienced Rolling Stones as you find out near, near the end. I just like, does anything that's not out of the ordinary, just just um, just think it's a stand. Like, don't, don't like, you know, be like, oh, that can't be anything. It's not something important. We, it's, it must be, a, it is always a stand. It's true. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not like part four where like, oh, it's like an urban legend kind of stuff. Like the whole like tunnel is the haunted thing with the highway star mm. stuff. I'm like, okay, that's actually, you know, that's, it's an urban legend. That, that's something that, you know, could be a stand. And as we learned in like Rohan one shots. These things exist in the world. <laughs> like e- there are non-stand supernaturalities. <laughs> there in, are in actual the gods in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. So. They yeah, find the bamboo. They piss in it. So they have, they have not, the, not after they first they start shoving dirt and spiders into and, it, which is so funny. But he like actually like spits them out like easily, but then like you have to laugh as you piss, falling our This is where like Abdul is like literally a new character. He's insane. He like he's he literally is like let's have a let's have a friendly male bonding where we piss together. Also, the he says it's the rule to laugh and it's, piss at the same it, time. It's big Tom Cruise on Oprah vibes of him to be a fucking madman, basically. And then this is actually where Paul Nareff says, like, Abdul, did your personality change? <laughs> I wrote that in my notes. Abdul might have brain damage. <laughs> it's literally in my notes. And then uh, they, they comically, like, fry the uh, cameo. I love the way cameo looks. It's, He's it's such a freak. It's very, like, someone got electrocuted and this is what they fried to, like... You remember when Spongebob had the bad breath and he fried the person with the bad breath? That's <laughs> yeah. what it looked like. It does actually, <laughs> like literally, actually he fries that woman and like kills, assumingly kills him in SpongeBob. <laughs> um, and that's it. <laughs> that's the end of this arc. Is yeah, Ab- they they piss on they piss in this man's tube. It's, we see piss leave his mouth, so we know that he they piss into his mouth. A shout out, a shout out to the people that co- had to color that. <laughs> they, they chose not to do the the yellow color. They made it white for some. He was reason. very hydrated. Also, his face of just like I love the way this guy looks. He's such a freak. I love he had like the scu- he has scuba goggles on and like he's got so- these big lips and his hair is like because like he had to be in the area for his stand to be sentient and do its own thing. Cause I don't think he was controlling it. Maybe maybe he was controlling. It. Maybe it was like one of the sentient stands to just. I like- think he was controlling it because he said like my name's Cameo. Like he was talking through yeah. the stand. It could so- be a stand just bullshit. I don't know, it could it could have been a sentient one. Could not have been. It could have. been. I mean like. Later on in the story, we see stands that, like, refer to themselves as the stand. Yeah. Um, especially when, like, even, like, Anubis, actually. Like, Anubis refers to himself. So, I don't know. It could go either way. It's not important. He identifies as a sword. <laughs> um, so, any, anything other than that? Then we got to, like, you know, Let's we, talk about the... Let's talk about, like, the next few pages. We kind of mentioned Yeah, already. we always want to talk about, like, the horrible, like... So, hi, technically, this is High Priestess, but we're going to talk about it right now. Because, yeah, we, because we're we'll spend a lot of time on, this, on the High Priestess one if we don't do it now. Yeah. So, so yeah, basically, the opponent's like, oh, yeah, Abdul's alive, guys. Can't believe it. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know. Oh, hey, Abdul. Like, they all, like, nonchalantly. And, like, so we find out they all knew. They Every, just, literally everyone. They all knew. And Ab- Abdul just kept fucking blaming himself. Polnareff. Yeah, Polnareff just kept fucking blaming himself, and he's just really pissed off. Like, Polnareff is, like, in the like, the right to be angry at them. He's extremely in the right. It's also, like, almost heartbreaking how excited he is to share this with them, and they don't give a shit. It should be a nice, touching reunion with everybody, but they all would take it so casual and just be like, welcome back, let's go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I like this. Yeah. I think I think this is, like, a misstep. Like, it is, oh, like... This, this is one of the big conflict the conflicting points in part three i know a lot of people have is abdul the return of abdul. either abdul should have come should have come back in maybe a different way or it should not have come back like shouldn't he should have been stayed dead or come back in a better more surprising way of like you know maybe someone else nursed him back to health or something or like you know the body disappeared they thought the body disappeared because of the stand or something mm. or like or maybe only joseph knew because he had the speed wagon foundation and stuff like that like not even like the other two knew even if, like, if it was just Joseph holding that secret, I would, I would have been like more accepting to it. Even the fact that, like, so just going back to, like, their reaction, 
we could have even have had like a moment where they're like, oh yeah, we, we knew about this, but they still like should embrace Abdul in some yeah. way, which also, they literally don't. They're like, hey, what's up? Also, he's not a hundred percent yet. Cause he said where he's like, I was only able to walk again three days ago, which is like, Maybe you shouldn't just drag him into, like... Danger. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just uh, incoming danger. Because as we know, he's going to be scuba diving. <laughs> <laughs> and fighting, like, like a water stand. So, so yeah, we're almost... So, we're almost done with... We have one thing left of the tarot cards. And then we're going... Oh, well, I guess technically Egyptian Iggy, God but... Cards. We're going to the Egyptian oh, yeah, God is. cards. I so. forgot that he's a, he's a tarot card. Yep, he's the last one. And then we get to... Oh, I guess Dio's technically the last one, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think, wait, so, yeah, because yeah, then, it's really funny to me, because the inclusion of uh, Vanilla Ice, he really just feels like, <laughs> this is this is what the, the stands start are... <laughs> of, like, the new formula. Yeah, this is what stands are going to be now from here on out. Yeah, because, like, a lot of, uh, like, we start to get it a few times, what? like, with a lot of the music what? references, but then, like... What's the other Darby stand, then? Is it not, because... Um... Uh, was it actually because like cause i don't know it's not it's not osiris because that's that's what Dar- the other darby is i'm pretty sure unless he also has a cyrus i'm gonna be honest the only one that i fucking know is geb <laughs> and anubis bloodstand <laughs> oh and Basta. i guess i could name a few bloodstand <laughs> kakarin looks down at his arm the words bloodstand are <laughs> <no>. <laughs> pretty good bloodstand <laughs> uh dio or D- diesel not dio <laughs> diesel diesel is great uh, but yeah, so that's it. Um, that's the the judgment arc of a uh, part three yes. of JoJo. Star yes. Wars Crusaders. Yeah, we're almost we're almost at the at the halfway point, I guess. It's so crazy because I feel like we're I feel like a we're tomb. near the end. Younger Darby is a tomb. Okay. So, and then older Darby is you said so Cyrus. Because yeah. So he, cause he, cause he, I don't know anything about the god of tomb. Well, we we actually can look up look up Egyptian god mythology if we want. Oh, that should be like a little... <laughs> we're more interested in that than we are actual tarot cards. Cause... We used to do a thing on this show, and by that I mean like the first two times where I looked up like what the the tarot card was and only for the important it. characters. Because well, they they started to get like really irrelevant. Yeah, uh, like lovers, like how how is lovers related to like that ability? Because if you, two people love each other, you gotta be, so if two people are attached to each other and just like the stands are attached from the user to the stand who he's affecting. Sure. Sure. But honestly, <laughs> the, sun's a sun. uh, the sun's a <laughs> sun. The sun is literally <laughs> sun's a sun. Nothing. The fool is a dog. Um, hold on, wait. I'm gonna look up what is it? Judgment, judgment stand. Oh, not stand. Tarot card. <laughs> the judgment stand. <laughs> tarot so meaning so yeah i'm excited to get, we, we're done with when we're done with the high priestess and then we'll get to end all i don't remember what the order of all, all the uh the other egyptian gods but we're gonna get there okay so according to uh google judgment which is 20 card 20 xx um <laughs> is a generally an angel um depicting depicted blowing a great trumpet um the card is referred to as a time of resurrection and awakening very fitting. actually very fitting uh, a time when a period of our life comes to an absolute end making way for dynamic new beginnings honestly this one is like Ex- very appropriate except when the dead is actually alive because yeah like we actually so it kind of works two ways because we have the resurrect like the literal resurrection of like the fake versions of the people and then also like the kind of metaphorical resurrection of abdul into the story like to Paul Nerf, who a character we he believed was dead. Yeah. So I, I the only quite I, mean, I, I think it's kind of a new beginning because we start the the Egyptian gods. We scene. have one left and we get get two Egyptian gods. Egyptian, Egyptian god cards. Egyptian god cards. It's life for the sky dragon and winged dragon of Ra. I don't think Ra's actually a god in in the actual arcs. Ra. Ra, who's like you know the big head He's god. He's like the main. Yeah. I guess we had the sun, so we don't need another sun god. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm I'm interested to hear people's comments about the actual. Uh, thoughts on abdul for at like, the resurrection yeah because like as we learned he doesn't really do much like other than like the the best death fight and then just dies after like in the vanilla ice he, he may have had you know some dialogue but like i don't think he actually like had a fight other than best death with joseph and that's more of a comedy fight than it is a serious fight yeah i'm really wondering from like a from a storytelling standpoint why did iraqi choose to bring him back yeah was it that he really felt like he had a he wanted to give this there's, character a moment. There's definitely an author note, I, I'm sure, about that. We don't have time or, or energy to, you know, look it do up. Do research. Yeah. Do, do the I most did, minimal I, amount of research. I, I tried to, you know, look up that trivia about it, but it wasn't much trivia, you know, other than, like, what Judgment's role in the game was, which is essentially in the RPG where, you like, you fight, like, 
Abdol and Sherry as like in the RPG one, and then you fight like like uh like puppets of like Dio in like in uh, Heritage of the Future. You fight like you know just just versions of other characters essentially. Mm-hmm. That's it. There wasn't, there wasn't any much fun trivia. There wasn't any really movie you know facts or who's inspired by. So. Anything else you want to say? Or you actually look up these, like, I'm just trying notes? to look it up really quick. It's really hard because... Yeah. Uh, I'm very... There's, a, there's so much conjecture about Rocky's writing style. It's going to be weird knowing that this character's going to die again. It is really upsetting. <laughs> In a worse that. way. <laughs> In a horror... Like, but that ice chapter is fucked, so... Uh, I do have to say, like, even though Abdul might not literally do anything... This, like, little return is really fun. This chapter, or this arc, rather, I, I enjoy for what it is. Yeah. Uh, I like Paul Nareff getting more time. It's funny. How well, Paul, Paul Nareff most gets of the, so much. Yeah, because I know he's, like, the main focus in a new like, in a new bit for the most part. Him and Jotaro have, like, you know, both have major focus. He, Alessi, which he, oh. he's, he has a major focus for. Um, is it the first? No, it's the Whole Horse and Boingo team up, too. Oh. That one, he's, like, the focus, because... He's yeah. like a, he has a part where his tongue turns into an arrow. Yeah. Because he's like being, he's like the hostage in that one. Oingo Boingo, I guess it's like everybody just bullshitting with, with Oingo. Yeah. <laughs> for the most part. I'm so excited for the Oingo Boingo chapters. And then like, yeah, ba- yeah Bastis is just Abdul and it's like, Pono still has a lot of focus because, you know, Iggy has Pet Shop. Then we have Vanilla Ice who is just like. <laughs> it fucks up everybody in the like oh, that's a pull nerf moment too isn't it yep that's like his like final it, one of the coolest like finishers to that oh, I, i'm excited yeah that he he's a major player because that's like that's like his like you know climax fight of everybody pull nerf like liked or had a little relationship with just fucking dies it's, it's spoilers spoiler alert one of the biggest bloodbaths in jojo <laughs> next to like probably part five the, the part ending of part six Every character dies. Yeah. I, they I, don't really die. No one's ever really gone. <laughs> As we, <laughs> that's the theme of part... Like, more like, like part, the end of part five and like part eight, I guess now, <laughs> compared to... There's a lot. There's a couple deaths within part eight, but... Couple? <laughs> literally half the cats. They get... <laughs> they literally get abdoled back into the story and then immediately abdoled out. <laughs> Abdul, I love the term of Abdul being used for like coming back and also dying. Like, that's really funny. Abdul had more time than the characters in part three did. Cringe, so, cringe. anything else you want to say about Judgment and Abdul? Um, it's fine. It's it's totally a fine arc. It's one of like it's a very mid tier arc for yeah. me. Um, I think honestly, a lot of time is spent with like too much time is spent with Polnair fighting his sister. I don't, like, I think that could have been condensed. There's not much, like, going into the sister stuff other than just, like, the trick. Yeah. Of just, like, I need to consume flesh and I will get my body back. Basically just, like, breaking Paul Nareff down to have, like, a really low moment. Yeah. He doesn't really want to fight back against these two people. And that's the kind of, like, the, the... But I want to know, like, what if he wished for, like, info instead? Would he actually would have obliged to it or just, like, attack him instead? If he was smart, yeah, that's really qu- interesting. smart about it and not like get his emotions or like depression, get him felt it's the best over him. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like uh, we're thinking too much about this arc. I th- I, I feel like we've I'll, already put too much I like, into it. I like to overthink about part three stands of how you could break them even more if you had to put your brain to it. Because here's like here's the issue. This is why I don't don't want to keep pressing on this. Because like let's say that um, cameo picked Polner for a reason he would have to have known that not only was Abdul dead but he's not actually dead i, I feel like he was camping there j- for hopefully it's one of them to go by there alone and, and then to react i guess so but like as you said because would have if jotaro if, i mean jotaro probably would, be, would not have fallen for that and beat the shit out of whatever he or of judgment itself because he would have been like you're clearly a stand yeah also the, the and, activation of the stand we like, haven't really talked about well, that um imagine if it was joseph and he said like i wish for caesar to be back or like you know yeah i wish my good friend stroheim didn't die in <laughs> the um, war well where was it stalingrad or yeah <laughs> my good friend and not totally a nazi I, I still i still will not get over how they valorize stroheim's 
Starheim's death at like one of the most <laughs> horrific like theaters for the russians like, i know literally they were like sieged in stalingrad for like over a year and a half i think yeah eating like sawdust for bread like they had no nothing and yeah. then we give stroheim this like valorous, died honorably honorable death like <laughs> fuck like, you it's just like one of the things where they, maybe they could they should have had a group thing and have like you know it was joseph and ponov and then to come leading up to joseph having to reveal that this is not the real abdul like have a wish for like oh joseph wished for caesar to be alive kind of thing you know because he's still maybe feels horrible about that and then like having to deal with his ghost of this past yeah would have been like of not being there quick quick enough it would have been so cool to see like another like, missed opportunity of like we get to alessi and like not have young joseph appear just for like a short thing of time mm-hmm. where like, joseph would have been a perfect foil because he's he's so he's old so like he has more time that he can get taken off of him and like just seeing younger it would have been really good yeah we'll talk we'll talk about that when we get there but i think I think Iraqi intentionally built this arc so that it was Paul Nareff because I think, Paul Nareff does I, have the guilt. I think it, would have, it was Paul Nareff and, and Joseph and then just having, like, Joseph having to admit that's not the real Abdul because he knows it's not him. Oh, yeah. That would have been kind of interesting, actually. A better lead up than just, like, oh, we know this shit. We're, we're just all keeping it from you. And I did a whole acting thing before, like, right beforehand with Abdul's father. That would have been, honestly, that would have been kind of interesting, similar to how, like, there was the the element of whole horse in the Enya fight, and, and we, he adds like complexity yeah. to that fight. And, and who would have bullshitted with a genie, like the stupid stuff of a potential <laughs> of a genie, than than Joseph, who's probably watched plenty of movies about genies and shit. <laughs> Imagine him like breaking out like fucking like legal paperwork Dude, and going like line by he, line. He'd do the mental gymnastics of just doing like the ultimate like like mental gymnastics like wish. The perfect wish that is like uncorruptible. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure like the in the wish. I don't, I don't think I've seen too much of Wishmaster, but I've heard someone talk about it. Where like, Master. yeah, Wishmaster. Where like, is it had to deal a lot with like angels and like demons stuff like that. Where like, all the wishes are like monkey paw wishes, but the one main character wishes for like the help of the archangel Michael, and like the guy granted wishes like that's a good fucking wish, Jesus Christ. And he basically just like he's not like had the angel powered, but he's basically there for like his like info and like he's, uh-huh. he's like using a vessel essentially and like he's basically just like yeah that was a good wish man i can't actually like monkey paul that's other than the angel not having his powers but like good job man he's like, you got a big brain <laughs> i like the idea i don't know if this has ever been done in media but i like the idea of like someone going to a lawyer and having like a contract <laughs> written out for a wish because like a lawyer would be the perfect person because they would pour over like every possible you have to word it thing. in the, the the way to do it, like the wording to it in like one sentence yeah exactly they i could just see them sitting like staying up for like 38 hours like just okay no we we can't say this word if we say this word then the, the genie could do this and uh, that'd be really funny like a little could be like a sketch maybe not like a not like a story yeah i think and joseph probably would have wished for like i wish for the vampires to all die <laughs> anything related to the stone mass it just fucking yeah, that's died. that's why it had to be paul Nair, because but, he he had the guilt he has the stupidity but i said paul could have made those two wishes and then joseph just like wished for like you know caesar or something and to have three zombies and just like oh fuck this is our past coming back to haunt us or like mm-hmm. our guilt of the dead like coming back because they because yeah joseph did not take that death good at all <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the giant biblical cross that crushes caesar <laughs> <laughs> all right do you have anything else no I we talked we a lot this. about this it's a lot of nonsense but it, these generally run about this long but like this one was just mostly nonsense it's us ranting about the powerful the power of these stands the moment i brought up the big brain fish in the beginning i was like this is gonna be a this is gonna be a wild one yeah so uh anything else or just plug it up plug it up so again thank you all for very much for listening please like comment subscribe hit that bell i'm not sure if this recording we're almost at five thousand subscribers at this point we at the time of this recording we literally have like 30 people we with 30 subscribers to 5k so yeah if, if it's not there by the time this video's out do that tell a friend please <laughs> please get your parents to subscribe <laughs> if you, yes actually don't do that don't do that um could, uh, yes, of course, you can follow the uh, the podcast on Twitter, and uh, you can follow me and Jim at, also as <laughs> you're showing me on your phone. <laughs> Nothing else for him. I was like, what are you a, doing? I was trying to film you to see what your reaction would be. <laughs> so yeah, you can follow the podcast Face and me reveal. and Jim separately. Don't do that. Not yet. Don't tell you now these 5,000. And then um, you can f- you check out other videos as well, and you can join our Discord. <laughs> I'm smirking at you. I don't like that. You're throwing me off. <laughs> i don't like that hail to you sam hail to you hail to you jim 
<laughs> Let you All right. fire. Is that everything? <laughs> Follow me on know. Twitter. I'm at King Protus. At, at Go Kai Q. <laughs> Follow the podcast at Joe Kakaka Podcast. That's yes. Twitter dot com. Yes. It's all it's all in the info probably of this. It always is. So yeah. And we'll see you next time for High Priestess and then we'll be on to Egypt. Can't wait. The- We're actually gonna start recording those episodes in Cairo. I've actually bring the Egyptian god cards. <laughs> you would. I have Obelisk's Tormentor. Oh, but he's so strong. He's the best one. He's the only good one out of them for Obelisk the most part. The Tormentor. Oh, the Tormentor is better. But Slave for Sky Dragon can nullify all magic attacks. <laughs> There's some bullshit that made up anime shit. <laughs> and well, well, Ra- the Wing Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode is pretty good. But... Is that what the other one is? What's the third one? The Wing Dragon of Raw. Of Raw. 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 <laughs> uh, Raw. There's Slave for the Sky Dragon, a.k.a. Slave for the Executive Producer. Uh, and Obelisk Tormentor. Don't Three. Is don't, that like is a, it, a yeah, bridge joke? joke. Everybody just calls him that. <laughs> That's so stupid. And, All right, we need to end this. Wait, you want to talk about the other sacred beasts on Yu Gi Oh GX? No. We need to get my Yu Gi Oh podcast going. <laughs> no, you can uh, you can do your Yu Gi Oh podcast. It's nowhere near me. <laughs> I, I refuse to. And be then involved. we will st- we will start a children's card game soon when we get to the Egyptian the Egyptian Crusades. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, we'll see you next time. See you next time.